Hi, it's Grace. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another reading vlog. I'm starting the vlog still on a Thursday, not switching up that much, but a little bit later today, hence. Mm. Uh, because I was about to say, oh, because I'm so busy. Then I remembered it's so boring when people talk about how busy they are. So now that I've checked myself before I wrecked myself, let's talk about what we are reading this vlog. You might know that I am a massive completionist with books. Like if I read a book that I absolutely love, I'm excited to have found a book I love, but I'm more excited to have found an author that I might potentially love, might be a new favourite, and then I want to read and buy all of their books. So I thought for this video it would be fun to read a second novel from authors who I discovered last year and whose books I read last year were some of my favourites of the year. That honestly took me like seven takes to say. So there were three books last year on my top ten of the year um, where I'd only read one book by that author, but where they have other books if that makes sense and so I've got two of them the third one was Colson Whitehead and I have the Underground Railroad planned for another vlog so then I just looked at my five star reads and I have three books that I'm really excited about so let's start off with Mr. Loverman by Bernadine Evaristo so Go Woman Other was one of my favorite books of last year it was on my top 10 list as it was on so many people's I absolutely loved it this came out before Girl Woman Other and I've only heard like amazing things about it it's about an older man who is married living in the UK but from the Caribbean but he's kind of unhappily married because he's in love with and has been having a long-term relationship with his best friend so this is apparently like very heartwarming very fun I just love Bernadine Neverister's writing style so yeah I can't wait for this one then I have funnily enough like the exact same color book this is the confessions of Max Tivoli by Andrew Sean Greer so Andrew Sean Greer wrote Less which was one of my absolute favorite books of last year I now see it as one of my favorite books of all time and this was his debut novel I believe this sounds quite different to Less it's about a man who ages backwards and it's kind of a love story so a little bit like speculative which isn't always my thing but I, I found Less really really moving this sounds like it could be moving um yeah I've never heard anyone talk about this book so interesting and then finally i have another brooklyn by jacqueline woodson so i read red at the bone last year loved it five star narrowly missed out on being in my top 10 um and i had thought that that was her only adult novel and potentially like there's some discussion about whether this is ya or adult like i've seen a few different things but i mean it's so arbitrary anyway isn't it um and like it's blurbed by Anne Patcher. It's not like obviously YA as far as I can tell and I'm super excited because her writing style was beautiful, so lyrical. This is set in 1970s Brooklyn and it's about a group of friends who grew up together as teenagers, a group of girls, and then about them getting older and like reflecting on their life, which just sounds amazing. I love like female friendships and a dual timeline. So yeah, I am as I always say, very excited to read all of these books over the next few days and hopefully find out if these authors are like one hit wonders for me or if they are some of my new favourite writers. So that is what we're going to do. So I know I wasn't going to talk about how busy I am but on Thursday night I usually cook dinner and today I was like I just simply, I simply don't have time, too high flying. So my compromise was I said I'd pay for fish and chips which I think was kind of genius. So having fish and chips soon. So I might do a little bit of reading before then and I think the first book I'm going to pick up is Mr. Love Man, just because it's been on my TV all the longest. Off to pick up my fish and chips. I mean, it's a top tier takeaway to be honest. It's funny that it's like not a thing in America. I'm literally just talking to you because I forgot my headphones, if we're being honest. Um, yeah, gonna get a cod and chips, a little curry sauce. I really have nothing against the curry sauce, won't hear a word against it. I do, however, have an issue with my friend from Wigan who puts gravy on her fish and chips. I do think that is quite disgusting. And actually, it's pretty light, like, for 7 p.m. I'm happy about that. Fish and chips are here. Mmm. I did read some Miss Love Man, but I only got like 10 pages in. More just wanted to show you my mini eggs. I think we sold the shop out of mini eggs for a while, but back in stock, baby. I'm actually doing a Zoom call with two of my best friends at 8 p.m. So, will I even do more reading tonight? Probably when I'm in bed, but yeah, first gonna zoom the gals. Good morning, happy Friday. It is a beautiful day outside, shall I show you? Look at them blue skies. Unfortunately, I actually have meetings this afternoon. I usually like finish at lunchtime on a Friday, but I have meetings, so I can't frolic in the sun this afternoon. It is sunny, I mean, I am also sat with a massive blanket on to work because I get cold and I have a coffee. So, I have now read 75 pages of Mr. Love Man by Bernadine Evaristo 
and really enjoying it so far unsurprised uh literally everyone who's read this book has loved it like i've never seen even like a moderate review we're following this guy called barrington who is in his 70s and he's married to a woman called carmel they met in antigua when they were growing up and then got married moved to england they've since lived their life there they've got kids um and yeah now he's in his 70s and they have like a very unhappy marriage because Carmel thinks that for years he's been like cheating on her with other women like having one night stands having an affair and he hasn't but he has been in a relationship with his best friend Morris since they were teenagers and now that he's in his 70s he's kind of decided that he's really not happy with Carmel he wants to live out the rest of his life with Morris and that he's going to ask her for a divorce so that's kind of like the setup but it's obviously really difficult because even though he's no longer happy with Carmel um and it is set in 2010 in the present timeline there's still a lot of homophobia specifically in their kind of antiguan caribbean community um carmel's very religious as are her friends and he's worried about what his kids will think and i really like obviously i love bernardine everester's prose and especially in this book i'd say it's very like musical it's very like conversational it's also very funny especially like barrington is a very funny character it has already made me laugh and i also like that we have this present day timeline but then we look back throughout like from when they first met they've lived together for you know all these years so we're kind of like flip-flopping through time to get a better understanding of what carmel and barrington's relationship has been like and i'm also really enjoying that we get carmel's perspective as well um because obviously in barrington's eyes like she's this horrible woman who he doesn't really like and he just wants to be with morris but then when you get her perspective you see like it's a little bit more nuanced than that you know she truly believes that her husband has been cheating on her for a long time she's always been suspicious of him she can tell that his heart was never really in the relationship specifically in like the sexual aspect of the relationship so i think that's going to add a really interesting dynamic i am obviously rooting for barry and morris because they're just very sweet and i love their relationship so yeah so the time is oh my god 12 o'clock on the dot and i have a ticket for a festival this summer like will it happen probably not but it rolled over from last year um it's kendall calling which is a festival in the lake district i think i spoke about it in a video recently the lineup for 2020 was so good it was like all loads of my favorite bands like falls dmas blossoms shaggy was gonna be there it's sick and yeah like i say very much is a massive festival gonna happen in july we don't know it is unlikely but i have a ticket i'm allowed to be excited about it for now and they're just they have just released at 12 o'clock the 2021 lineup so let's do a live reaction i'll be so sad if it's bad okay 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 supergrass they were meant to be in 2020 love supergrass stereophonics not really into the stereophonic dizzy rascal dizzy rascal's so good live that'll actually be so good i think he was on the lineup for 2020 as well actually um blossoms yes dmas yes okay craig david i mean sure why not Oh, no shaggy. The streets. I mean, how do I feel about it? I'm very, very excited that Blossoms and DMAs are still going to be there because I've never seen Blossoms before and they are like one of my favourite bands. I'm obsessed with them and I've seen the DMAs before, um, but I love them and I love their new album. The Co the Kooks. I can't remember if they were on the thing last time. Um, they're just such a like, I'm Amy and I'm an Inde. If you were like that as a teenager you love the cooks um yeah not first about stereophonics buzzing about dizzy rascal unfortunately oh pale waves i love pale waves scouting for girls i mean sure why not unfortunately foals were on the lineup for 2020 that didn't happen and they're not on here and that's going to make alex really sad because he was meant to see foals in berlin in april and then at kendall and then obviously couldn't do either so on the whole there's no like new people that i'm buzzing about i don't think um Although I'm not sure that Pale Waves were on it last year. And I do love a Pale Wave. Um, so yeah, okay. I can deal with that. Like I say, will it happen? Probably not. But can I make a playlist and get excited for the next few months? Yes, I can. And I will. Um, yeah, so might nip out and get some lunch now because I have this meeting at two o'clock. My life has been so boring today. Like I've just had nothing interesting to tell you about. But I've just finished work, it's nearly five o'clock, and I am going to read some Mr. Loverman with what little of the afternoon I have left. My hair's actually really annoying me, but I tied it up like this when it was wet, and I'm deeply concerned about what it's gonna look like. Oh. Uh, I mean, 
I mean, it's given me some much needed volume. Too much volume? That wasn't quite as dramatic as I thought it was gonna be. See, even my hair disasters aren't interesting today. I'm having a domestic disaster. Um, basically, I bought this new jumper. I'm just sat by the washing machine. It's washing machine related. You may have seen it, I wore it in a video. It's like a mint green jumper and like lovely Ed was like, that really suits you. I was like, yeah, it does suit me. Like, why don't I wear like light colors more? It was so soft. I was like literally saying to Alex all night, like mm, touch my jumper, isn't it nice? Then it came to have dinner um and it involved like chili sauce and halloumi and chorizo and i was like oh i probably shouldn't eat in this jumper and i was like no no grace, you, grace you're a grown adult you're a grown adult it's fine um yeah it wasn't fine just dropped it all over me so i had like chili sauce all down me a bit of halloumi went in the sleeve so i could like feel it was all wet so i like jumped up and i was like ah ah alex my jumper my jumper my jumper rang my mum immediately because she's like stain queen and i was like what do i do what do i do what do i do like ran in and she was like right run water under the like on the other side of the stain and then like put washing liquid on it so i did that and then i put it in the wash but obviously like in that sink I'm like trying to wet the jumper and it got like soaking wet. <sighs> then I washed it and it was like sodden. I've been putting it on spin cycles, like probably about eight spin cycles, just constantly, every time I remember, if we're being honest. And the jumper is still soaking wet. Can you hear that? Dripping wet. <sighs> and I don't know what to do and I'm really sad because it was my new favorite jumper. This is literally why I can't have nice things. This is a very old school GK filming setup, but it's so light. It's like after six o'clock and it's still sunlight and the sun is nicely setting. So I'm just sat by the window looking out. We'll definitely creep Alex out if he walks up the street to come in and I'm just like looming out the window at him. So I'm now 200 pages into Mr. Loverman. It is about 300 pages, I think. And still just really, really enjoying it. I'm not exactly sure I'd describe it as like plotty, but there's definitely like a lot to get your teeth into i think maybe because we're like looking so much into the past but there's also like things happening in the present she's really like painting a picture of london over a much longer period of time so barry will like talk about the 60s or the 70s or the 80s or the 90s um and you get these sort of little like moments of history even though it is also like quite a tightly focused present day timeline i just think that works really well and it is just like very funny um Barry is a kind of lovable character but equally like you're getting it from his perspective and there's parts where I'm just like oh I love you and like the way he feels about Morris and like when he talks about like his family back in Antigua and stuff like you really do just love him but then equally like he's he's kind of a bit misogynistic which I think is like intentional like I get that he doesn't love Carmel because he's gay but equally doesn't treat Carmel particularly well and then when you get Carmel sections where she's so sad because the man that she loved and married like has never told her that he loves her like that's also really sad like it seems obvious to say like oh you know characters aren't just all good or all bad like human beings aren't like we know that but there's just something about the way the book's doing it that you're constantly like wrong-footed with how you feel about a character i just think it's really clever the way that she's playing with character and i guess yeah like showing such nuance when she's drawing character yeah the book generally is just very nuanced for like a not particularly long book like we get the experience of what it's like to be black and an immigrant in London, but then also Barry has worked very hard and built up a certain wealth that his grandchildren, as much as he is still concerned about like the very real racism and you know, what it's like to be a young black man in London, they're kind of a very privileged in other ways, like financially, like the private schools they go to. And Barry obviously has an experience over the last like 50 years of being in London, experiencing homophobia, but then he is kind of internalizing a lot of that homophobia or he still kind of struggles with aspects of it which is just really like realistic i think bernadine every so in this and in girl of another just writes like very believable characters i think that's why it's so enjoyable and so easy to read because it feels really really authentic but then she has a talent for like picking out these little interesting moments that are really compelling so yeah enjoying it a lot i know i've had like 10 different hairstyles today but look at me with my high ponytail this hair be growing it is Friday night, so that means two things, pizza and aggressive table tennis tournament. Who will win? There's no way to know. It'll be Alex. Um, I can only beat him when he's drunk, so.
I've had to shut the blind because the sun is just like absolutely blinding. Um, yeah, happy Saturday, good morning. I am just getting ready for the day. I did finish reading Mr. Loverman last night, so I wanted to tell you about that. And yeah, it was just a really, sorry, I'm kind of keeping my voice down because I'll still in bed. Yeah, I thought it was a really sweet story, um, like a good story, well written. It was like moving, funny. I think in Girl, Woman, Other, I was like so impressed by the way Bernadine Everisto did characters, like even in such a small amount of time because in that book I think it's like 12 characters that she looks at. I was really impressed by her characterization and I think in this book it was like less expansive so she could be even more, um, she could spend even more time developing like a fewer characters. So yeah, I really, really liked it. I'd give it like a four, definitely really enjoyed it. I'm just gonna put a bit of uh, makeup on and if any of you watched my like things I've been loving recently video, I mentioned um, this primer that I've got in an advent calendar that I've been using loads and I was like, I love it so much. It's the Becca backlight priming filter. Um, so I post that video, I'm like, you guys should check it out and Becca straight up say, shut the business down. Close it, shut the entire thing down. Stop making makeup, get out of the game, shut it down. Yes, they've, they've just shut down. So don't think I'll be able to get another one of these. So I kind of wanted to like savor this one. So then yesterday I found another advent calendar primer, the Laura Mercier one. This is pure canvas primer um, and I tried it and I don't know if I put too much on or like didn't let my moisturizer sink in. It went really like patchy on my face. But people love this, so I think I might try it again today. Potentially setting myself up for failure, but Alex is the only person who's gonna see me. This is actually the last weekend in the UK. I may as well just put my makeup on now. Tell you if you're interested. This is my moisturizer. I think getting out of my advent calendar. It's the Elemis Pro Collagen Marine Cream, which makes you feel like a sailor. Um Yeah, so in the UK, a small bit of this. This is the last weekend before you can meet people in gardens. So as of Monday, you can meet people in gardens, up to six people. So that is extremely exciting and it's Easter weekend next weekend. So we have some plans to meet up with our friends and our families outside. And this is very like mattifying, I would say, which I'm not sure I'm, I'm vibing with. Do you, um, my NARS tinted moisturizer. Like it's sheer anyway, and then I use a sponge. Some would say, what is the point? It just makes me feel good, you know? So I use this concealer. It's the Bendy Avocado Concealer from First Aid Beauty, I think, and it's so good. But this is like really running out and also too dark for me. But gotta conceal those under eye bags. Should I risk it? Okay, we can work with the window open a little bit more. Ah. Oh, and no we can't. Glad I did that. It literally makes this room look like such a dark goblin hovel, but anyway. This is the Fenty Beauty Cream Bronzer. It's nice. I actually just love putting makeup on. I find it so relaxing and so kind of like satisfying. A blush moment. This is a Glossier. I do have like so many Glossier products that I absolutely love, um, which is kind of annoying as recently. I don't think they're really the best business to support, but I have it, I'm obviously gonna use it up. Highlighter, also Glossier, but it's so good. And the one I used before this, the only other highlighter that I've ever like truly loved, was from Becca. So that's good. I'm just all about the cream highlight. Guys, powder highlights, not for me. Brows, you guessed it. A Glossier boy brow, to be fair. My brows are pretty bushy by themselves. <clears throat> I just like a little gel to keep them in place. The one thing that I do like really care about and take loads of time to do every day is curl my eyelashes because my eyelashes are just not the one without it. This is why we curl. Curled lashes, non-curled lashes. And a Glossier mascara. This mascara is so good. The lash slick. Obsessed. Okay, we done. Ali's basically going to be dead to the world for the foreseeable, so let's go downstairs get a drink and read my next book. Just reading my nice outfit with my sports jumper because I'm such a sporty spice. Um, but it's cold. I am having a smoothie and I'm drinking out of a straw because I'm extra. I am going to pick up my next book and I'm gonna pick up The Confessions of Max Tivoli by Angie Sean Greer. I'd said I'd never heard anyone who's read this book and I posted it on Instagram and someone actually said it's like one of their favorites of all time. So that's exciting because Les is 100% one of my favorites of all time, which is his second novel. I think I actually was listening to a podcast. I think it was Caroline O'Donoghue's Sentimental Garbage, where she has like guests on to talk about books that they love. 
that are seen as like not literary because they're like actually nice um and when they're talking about less i'm pretty sure they said that this author thought that this was going to be like his big book that was like a masterpiece and was going to get loads of attention and this didn't really get any attention and then he just wrote less kind of thinking it was more fun and then that won the pulitzer so interesting background um like i say it's a little bit mad not magical but it has this like guy aging backwards benjamin button style so yeah let's give it a go so i read like 25 pages of this um this is such a flattering angle i'm just trying to hide that bit of like paint paint peeling off the wall <laughs> that was a very rude kick from alex there um and i'm enjoying it it's like historical which i didn't realize the guy's born in like the 1870s but then we know he's gonna live till he's 70 just backwards <laughs> i'll film you so i wasn't expecting it to be historical but it kind of gives it more of like a magical fairy tale feel i am intrigued but yeah only 25 pages in i'm gonna meet my sister outside in the world because the sun is shining yeah so that's the plan for this saturday afternoon how are you feeling alex <laughs> He's not feeling good. Gluten tag. So I spend the afternoon with my sister out on the town. Do you remember when out on the town used to mean actually in a pub and not just like sat on a patch of grass or the beach drinking? Um, Learnt my lesson though. Last time I took my camera to the beach, I got so much sand in it. I actually thought I'd broken my camera. Like the lens wouldn't open properly. I'm like picking sand out of it. Thought I'd broken the most expensive thing I've ever owned. So now the camera does not go out with me i'm now like just under halfway through i think it's about 260 pages and i'm like 120 pages in maths and i am enjoying it it's definitely very like easy to read it is historical as i mentioned and it is quite like literary like the language is very like descriptive a little bit of a boast because we're following this like old man basically regaling his life story um, but because it's this like strange setup where immediately we know like he's born as a child but he looks 70 and as he grows up he looks younger like you're just compelled to keep reading because at the start of it like you know that that's the situation but you don't know the details of you know like how much younger does he look or like how does it happen so you just sort of like in the swing of it because you want to find out like what this weird situation that he's living in is like it's pretty again i wouldn't say fast paced but like a lot's happening because we're covering 70 years in a 260 page book basically so things are happening um we find out like about his family situation what his childhood was like his best friend huey um and then the point of the book alice the love of his life this girl that he meets and it's a funny one because in less the love story was like my favorite thing about it and it was like really like subtly done like it snuck up on me but at the end of that book i was like so emotional and i still think it's like one of the best like love stories i've read in a book but thus far finding it more difficult to get on board with this because it's very much like the trope of this man sees this girl doesn't know her that well they have a few combos and he's like in love with her obsessed with her um but i guess maybe andrew sean greer is like tr tricking me into that maybe like lulling me into a false sense of trope security and is going to change it up but basically max meets alice when she is like 15 and he's 17 but he looks like 50 60 um and so it does add like a little bit of a weird layer to it because although he is like 17 he is like a presenting 50 year old man who becomes an who is like in love with this young girl so that's definitely like an interesting dynamic like it doesn't feel like perverse i guess because like it's from his perspective and he is a 17 year old boy but also like how you don't get alice's perspective at all about what it's like that when she meets this old man i don't know um but yeah just like they're not together very long like they don't know each other for very long and then she leaves moves away and it's just that thing where like his entire life like he's now 25 i think but like looks whatever 70 minus 25 is um and he's just like i miss alice i'm obsessed with alice every time i see her surname and i'm just like bish why like i don't feel like i've really had enough explanation or enough like justification for why you'd be like so captivated so in love with this person you knew for like a couple of months 10 years ago but equally it's obviously a very weird situation that this guy's in you feel a lot of sympathy for max because like everything about his life is wrong like he can't 
do any of the things he wants he constantly feels out of place and i do think that's done really beautifully so maybe the love that he feels this kind of like overwhelming love ties into you know him feeling so out of place and he's finally found someone he connects to so i guess that does make sense and the book's doing like an interesting thing with time it's being told like in hindsight so he's now like 70 but looks like 12 and there's an interesting thing about like who he's living with because obviously he's a child but he's not a child so he has to be cared for and that's very interesting so yeah i'm enjoying it it's nice to read um and i still have high hopes that andrew sean greer can make me feel something hello so um i'm just wearing alex's cap we are gonna do a quiz a little zoom quiz throwback to lockdown one the best lockdown it's music through the decades i want to say it's called he had to pay for it which i thought was quite presumptuous but maybe we'll win the big monies i don't think so maybe if it was general null that's very bold of me to assume but i mean i don't think we'll be very good at this um yeah that's my thoughts on that what's our team name are the gruffalos the gruffalos i might actually get the gruff to be a little mascot to help us but yeah getting quizzical on a Saturday night. Okay, so we're ready to do this quiz. Alex's mum and stepdad are doing it as well, so we can like see them, but we're being losers and not putting our camera on. But we are team the Gruffalos, so I've got the Gruffalo. And yeah, that's our crazy, crazy lockdown Saturday night, eh? Gluten Morgan. Um, so we did the quiz last night and we did pretty shocking. Um, not gonna lie. It was really fun though. So it was like you answered on your phone um, and it was like fastest finger first kind of vibe. So it'd be like, what's the name of the track? And you just have to pick the first letter of the track. Cause obviously like if you spell it wrong, so you can just guess and get the point, but like it's unlikely you'd guess. It was fun. Um, I get like so weird about quizzing. Like I am an awful person to be around. I'm so competitive. Um, but yeah, I'll never say no to a quiz. And in lockdown it was, it was fun. And like you could have your video on we didn't or we did a little bit but then like al's mum and stepdad had the video on so we would like text them and then you could like see them react to your text it was just fun um but yeah not our best quizzing to be honest also the jumper you may have noticed has been saved uh and i thought what better time to wear it when it matches like all the books i've been reading um so i have been doing some cleaning this morning so i was like oh i'll pick up the audiobook for this because it was on scribd i swear scribd is just so good for having the audiobook for like everything um and like i i'm not a huge audiobook reader but when i'm doing something like cleaning tidying when it's just like my mind isn't engaged but my body is i find an audiobook perfect um and this i really like the audiobook but you can hear the guy like pausing and turning the page before he says it which kind of makes me laugh like it's not i guess the most professional but it is really good uh it's a perfect audiobook for me because i like audiobooks that are in first person and that are plotty because if it's a lot of like description or a lot of like introspection i just think it's a little bit harder to like concentrate on i prefer to read that visually but this is like a very plotty rompy fun historical told in the form of a confession so it's really working for me and i'm really really enjoying it it is very much i don't read a lot of historical fiction but it's that really good like historical romp as i've mentioned we're covering like a lot of time i just got to the end of part two on audio but there was like a bit of a big plot twist at the end of part two which i totally should have seen coming but i didn't uh, so that was fun so yeah i think i'm gonna finish reading the last 50 pages of this now and i'll give you my final thoughts i think at the minute i don't love it as much as less it's very different but i am definitely enjoying it hello just having a bit of lunch got some very on brand for the green books green jumper day got some got some avalon toast i also finished reading the confessions of max tivoli i really really liked it in the second i think i'd said i had 50 pages left i actually had 100 pages left but in those 100 pages it went in like a really interesting direction and it a lot of the things in the first half that i was a bit like hmm where's this going actually went in like a very satisfying way hard to talk about without spoilers but this idea of like this uh, love this one true love you have your entire life i wasn't sure if it was going to be more of like a romanticizing like historical fiction novel it's actually a little bit darker than that and i think it does some really interesting things with this idea of like the one person that you've loved your entire life it kind of is moving as well as it being a bit dark and uncomfortable i think andrew sean greer He's just a really, really talented writer. And I actually don't think that was his debut. I realised there is another novel that he wrote before that, which I would definitely be interested in reading that. I do think it's something pretty cool and unique. And I love his writing. But so far, we are two for two. Andrew and Bernie have both shown that they are not one-hit wonders for me. 
and that I will be reading all of their other books. So that is a success. Have I got off on my teeth? I'm good. Hello, welcome to my very chilled Sunday afternoon. Have a little Prosecco. I was trying to do some online shopping. I was like, ooh, that'll be a nice little Sunday afternoon activity. Like we're allowed to socialize outside soon. I hate all my clothes, obviously. Um, saved up a little bit of money because I thought oh, I might want to buy like a few like just nice things to feel nice again when we're allowed to go out. Why is it, riddle me this, that when you have no money or when you shouldn't be shopping, you literally just see like beautiful clothes everywhere. And then when you've actually like saved up, set time aside to be like, I'm gonna buy some clothes, everything is heinous and you just can't find anything. I, oh, it's so annoying. And I feel like everyone always thinks like, well, maybe they don't, but I feel like a lot of people always think like, oh, it's so hard to find clothes for me. And like, because I'm 5'9", so I'm not like super tall, but everything I own is too short for me. And like, I don't know, I just have, feel like I have weird, weird proportions. Um. So yeah, that was unsuccessful. I'm annoyed about it. But instead, I'm gonna pick up another Brooklyn by Jacqueline Woodson, um, which I'm really looking forward to actually. I'm in the mood for some kind of like really beautiful writing, which I think this will be. I just sort of like flick through it. It's like under 200 pages, but it's very, um, it's written kind of like this, if you can see, which is something that was definitely true of Red of the Bone. It was written in almost like vignettes. And I really loved it because it was like this really epic story, but told in these quite short, really lyrical, I guess, yeah, vignettes. So I actually don't think this will be a hugely long read, but once I'm a little bit in, I'll tell you what it is about. I'm like a hundred pages into this I think like 90 100 pages and it's definitely like very short like a quick read I guess it's maybe almost more like a novella but I'm absolutely loving it uh I don't know what I was expecting other than obviously I'd mentioned like some people call this YA some people call it adult and yeah I wasn't really sure like how similar it would be to Red at the Bone but if you loved Red at the Bone you will 100% love this it's just so the same in the way that I think Jacqueline Woodson manages to, in very few pages, create such like vivid characters and such a vivid world. And the writing is just so lyrical. You just sort of get like swept into it. It's like easy to read, but equally I think I could like go back through every sentence and enjoy it just for like the language. Like I really, really love Jacqueline Woodson's writing style. I'm so glad I picked this up. So we're following a young girl called August who lives in Brooklyn with her father and a younger brother. Her mother left them. The implication is she had some mental health issues and we're not sure exactly like what happened, like where she went. But yeah, she obviously really misses her mother and that's something her and her brother really struggle with. Her father starts to get involved with Islam. It's really just like their formative teenage years in Brooklyn and she makes best friends with three other girls who live in her kind of neighborhood who are also like young black women. It's really like, it's so poignant, I guess. Um, a lot of what they're talking about, obviously I'm only halfway through, but is about like them trying to like become women, follow their dreams. Like they're really passionate about their friendship group and they want to like do amazing things, but also like the constant threat and like underlying presence of men who are trying to take advantage of them, trying to abuse them, the way they have to kind of like grow older too quickly, have to become so aware of that. Also really looking at, obviously, as I've mentioned, like her loss around her mother and yeah, this new sort of family dynamic that her and her brother are trying to navigate. Um, at the start of the novel, you're with August as an adult and now most of the book has been her looking back to when she's a teenager. We've had kind of her meeting or seeing one of the girls that she was best friends with in childhood and knowing that like this hasn't been an enduring friendship despite how close they all were as teenagers. So yeah, I'm really interested to find out more about what happens to them. But yeah, it's just really kind of like quietly powerful, beautifully written. Some of the lines are just, yeah, really kind of like beautiful but sad she's really like drilled down into those feelings of being on the cusp of adulthood so much and and of having these like really strong female friendships in your teenage years so yeah absolutely loving it gonna keep reading it now don't think it'll take me long to finish it but yeah i i'm just so glad i picked it up i think jacqueline woodson's writing is like incredible look how light it is outside it's like seven o'clock um i finished another brooklyn i'm gonna tell you about it later but first i'm gonna eat 
a Sunday takeaway that I just really want to share with you because I think it's a very UK thing, potentially even a very northern UK thing. The majesty of the chip wrap. So it's like a tortilla wrap with chicken and chips in it. Mine has garlic sauce in it. And it's just... Get a load of that. Incredible. Incredible. Highlight of my Sunday. Gonna eat this and then I'll tell you about the book I finished. Okay, so chip wrap eaten. Do I have it on my face? Probably. Delish. Can't recommend it more. Try and find your like scuzziest, worst local takeaway. Order a chip wrap chicken tea with garlic sauce. Chef kiss. So yeah, I finished another Brooklyn and I loved it. I really loved it. I can maybe see why it would be like potentially YA because we are very much looking at like a girl in the throes of adulthood um, and struggling with kind of like teenage problems but then also kind of not like kind of very real problems around grief around coming into the world around the friendships that you make that are so intense in the way you feel when you're a teenager versus when you're an adult um around religion family like there's so much stuff as ever with Jacqueline Woods and packed into a very short book and I guess it's not a criticism like is so brief um and I would have loved more but equally I think like it's excellence comes from its ability to be really brief to have such gravitas in such short pages and be a really beautiful novella so yeah so on the Jacqueline Woods and hype I love this book so let's sum up I loved all these books if this video is going to be titled something like are these authors as good as I think or are these authors worth the hype the answer is yes all of these books were four star like minimum I mean we all know ratings are kind of stupid and arbitrary but I don't know I loved this so much it was funny it was plotty it was a great story I think she's a brilliant writer this was like a kind of beautiful historical romp that took on like an epic it did really interesting things it was really different it was really escapist captivating this was very beautifully written very lyrical a perfect like snapshot of a life it's hard to order them like part of me wants to be like this one then this one then this one i loved mr love man don't get me wrong i love bendy never stow but i definitely preferred girl woman other to mr love man i preferred less to the confessions of max tivoli but this was really special i don't think i've read many things like this before i preferred red at the bone to this but only because i think red at the bone gave us a little bit more this was a little bit more brief basically i love them all read them all you're welcome so that is the end of this vlog i really hope that you enjoyed it it's been a very chilled vlog i don't think i've left the house maybe to pick up my vision chips but yeah it's been very chilled thank you for watching obviously i'd love you subscribe my instagram and my storygraph are linked down below and i will see you in my next one bye